I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to give a talk at this conference. The title of this talk is Behavior of Principal Curvatures of Frontals Near Non-Front Single Points. This is a joint work with Kental Saji. First, I would like to explain some notions. Let F be a C infinity map from sigma to R3, where sigma is an open set in R2. Then, we call F a frontal if there exists a C infinity map new uh, from sigma to R2 uh, such that this orthogonality condition holds for any point Q in sigma and any tangent vector X. Moreover, a frontal F is said to be a front if the pair F nu uh, gives an immersion. We call the map nu a unit normal vector field or the Gauss map of F. We fix a frontal F. Then we set a function lambda uh, given by the determinant of F sub u, F sub v, and nu, where F sub u and F sub v are partial derivatives of F by u and v for some coordinates on sigma. The function lambda is called the signed area density function. We denote by SF the set of singular points of F, and then by the definition of singular points of F, SF coincides with the zero set of lambda. We take a point, singular point P, then P is said to be non-degenerate if the gradient vector of lambda at P does not zero vector. So, if P is a non-degenerate single point, then there exists an open neighborhood of P and the regular curve gamma passing through P uh, such that the lambda vanishes along gamma on U. Moreover, since a non-degenerate single point is a crank one single point, there exists a non-zero vector field eta on U such that df eta uh, vanishes at for any single point Q. We call gamma and eta the singular curve and the null vector field. Uh, moreover, we uh, define some class of some classes of uh, singular point, non-degenerate singular point. Uh, one is a singular point of the first kind, and other is a singular point of the second kind. A singular a non-degenerate singular point is said to be of the first kind if uh, gamma prime and eta are linearly independent at that point. And otherwise, we say, we say, uh, singular point of the second kind. So gamma prime is the uh, tangent, tangent vector of gamma. Uh, we deal with the case that P is of the first kind in the following. Then we set a function psi along gamma uh, by this form, where gamma hat uh, is uh, the composite map of F and gamma, and the new hat is the composite map of new and gamma. And eta nu is the directional derivative of nu in the direction eta. And the following fact is known. A frontal is a front at a single point of the first kind, if and only if, uh, C of zero does not vanish. So, uh, P is a non-front singular point, that is, frontal singular point, but not a front singular point, when uh, Psi of zero vanishes. Uh, we divide non-front singular points into the following two cases. Let P be a non-front singular point of a frontal F. Then, P is a K non-front singular point if C satisfies this condition for some uh, positive integer k. 
And other one is P is a uh, pure frontal singular point. If CT vanishes along gamma. These are the examples of, these are examples of, uh, such a singular point. A cuspidal cross cap is a typical example of one non front singular point. And a, a cuspidal is k minus one plus minus singularity is a typical example of k non front singular point. And a 2 5 cuspidal edge uh, is a typical example of pure frontal singular points. These are the pictures of this surface, uh, these mappings. So from left to, to right, uh, cuspidal edge, uh, cuspidal cross cap, and cuspidal S1 plus singularity, cuspidal S1 minus singularity, and a uh, 2 5 cuspidal edge. Uh, and the aim of this talk is that uh, we investigate behavior of principal curvatures of frontals near non front single points by using geometric invariance. Moreover, we study principal vectors and the ambiguity of non front single points. Uh, in particular, uh, I would like to explain a characterization uh, of an isolated uh, umbric point uh, by geometric invariance of frontals. Uh, to do this, uh, I would like to explain the geometric invariance of frontals. Let f be a frontal and p a non-frontal single point of f. Let gamma be a single point, a single curve uh, through p. Then the following geometric invariance can be defined along gamma. Uh, kappa s uh, is called the single curvature, and kappa nu the, called the limiting normal curvature, kappa c called the cuspidal curvature, kappa t uh, called the cuspidal torsion. So kappa s is an intrinsic invariance of frontals, and kappa nu and kappa c relates to behavior of the Gaussian curvature. Uh, moreover, if P is a K non front single point, then the following invariance can be uh, defined at P in addition the above invariance. So first one is the RB, uh, this is called the bias, and the second one is RC, this is called the secondary cuspidal curvature. Further, uh, if P is a pure frontal single point, then uh, RB and RC can be defined along gamma. These are the pictures of invariance. So the top left is a standard cuspidal cross cap. So this, this surface has uh, kappa S, kappa nu, uh, kappa T, RB, R0. And uh, the next one, is a picture of a uh, cuspidal cross cap with uh, positive kappa s and with negative kappa s and with non zero kappa nu and with non zero kappa t and non zero rb. Using invariance kappa c, uh, we can characterize types of singularities. Uh, let f be a uh, frontal and p a uh, single point of the first kind. Uh, then uh, p is a uh, non front single point if and only if kappa c of p vanishes. Uh, and p is a uh, k non front single point if and only if kappa c uh, satisfies these conditions for k. And finally, P is a pure frontal singular point if and only if kappa C vanishes along gamma. When P is a pure frontal singular point, uh, it is known that F at P is a 2 5 cuspidal edge if and only if the secondary cuspidal curvature RC does not vanish at P. To consider behavior of the principal curvatures, uh, we record behavior of the Gaussian curvature and the mean curvature. Around the non-front singular point P, 
behavior of the Gaussian curvature K and the mean curvature H are known. Uh, when P is a K known front singular point, then the Gaussian curvature K is unbounded, abounded uh, near P if and only if uh, kappa nu vanishes along gamma. Moreover, H is unbounded near P. Uh, for the case of pure frontal singular point, both the Gaussian curvature and the mean curvature are bounded smooth function near P. In particular, uh, when P is a pure frontal single point, Gaussian curvature and uh, the mean curvature can be characterized as this form, these forms at the uh, pure frontal single point. Uh, by this fact, uh, principal curvatures of a front might be bounded function around the pure frontal single point. Uh, for a front case, uh, one principal curvature can be extended as a simplicity function near non-degenerate singular point. Next, we consider a behavior of principal curvatures. For a frontal f with non-front single point p, we set a function capital gamma uh, by h squared minus k on the set of regular points. By the definition of uh, this function, capital gamma uh, is a non-negative function on the set of regular points. Uh, using this function gamma, we set two functions kappa 1 and kappa 2 on the set of regular points by this fo these forms. By the constructions, uh, kappa 1 and kappa 2 satisfies that these two conditions. Uh, one is uh, kappa 1 times kappa 2 is the Gaussian curvature uh, K, and uh, kappa 1 plus kappa 2 is the 2 times the mean curvature H. So, Kappa 1 and Kappa 2 can be uh, regarded as principal curvatures of a frontal F. Now, uh, we consider the behavior of these functions near a non frontal singular point. Uh, first, uh, we consider the case near pure frontal singular point. In such a case, we have the following assertion. Let F be a frontal and P a pure frontal single point. Then principal curvatures kappa 1 and kappa 2 of F can be extended as C infinity functions near P if and only if this relation holds along the single curve. In particular, a point P is an umbilic point if and only if Rb is equal to, to uh, 3 times kappa nu and kappa t is equal to 0 at p. Here we call a point p an umbilic point uh, if ga capital gamma of p vanishes. For a C infinity principal curvatures, uh, one can take a principal vector with respect to kappa 1 and kappa 2. So such a vectors are defined by this equation. So 1 hat is the first fundamental matrix and the 2 hat is the second fundamental matrix of frontal F. For principal vectors with respect to kappa j, uh, we have the following. Let P be a pure frontal single point and not umbil umbilic point of F. Then, both Bj can be extended as C infinity vector fields near P. Moreover, we have the following. The first assertion is that, suppose that kappa T does not vanish at P. Then, Vj a non-zero vector and for each j, vj of p 
is parallel to eta of p. So where eta is the null vector field of f. And the second assumption is that, suppose that kappa t vanishes along gamma. Then there exists a linearly independent vectors w1 and w2, such that for each j, bj is parallel to wj on a neighborhood of p. And the third assertion is that, suppose that R, Rv over 3 minus kappa nu does not vanish on gamma. Then gamma is a curvature line of f if and only if kappa t vanishes along gamma. Here we call gamma a curvature line if one of wj uh, is parallel to gamma prime. So by the second assertion, uh, uh, we can take a curvature line coordinate system around a pure frontal singular point uh, when kappa t uh, vanishes along gamma and p is not an umbilic point. Next, we consider umbilic points of frontals. We consider the case that the uh, pure frontal singular point satisfies gamma of p uh, vanishes. In such a case, p is a critical point of gamma. Moreover, if sat f satisfies the secondary uh, cuspidal curvature does not vanish at p and either 3 times kappa nu prime not equals to Rb prime or kappa t prime does not vanish at p, then gamma is a most function with index 0 or 2 at p. In particular, p is an isolated uh, umbilic point. This is a this is a characterization of umbilic isolated umbilic point of a frontal. Uh, in the second assumption, uh, since Rc does not vanish at p. Uh, f at p is a 2,5 cuspidal edge. Uh, this is an example. Uh, let f be given, be a map given by this form. Uh, then the origin is a 2,5 cuspidal edge of f. Uh, that is, the Rc does not vanish. And uh, by direct Calculation, we have kappa nu, rp, kappa t are zero, and kappa t prime does not vanish. Uh, thus, the origin is an isolated umbilic point of f by the previous theorem. Uh, in fact, uh, the graphs of principal curvatures uh, touched one point, so this left figure is the graph of kappa 1, and the center is graph of kappa 2, and right is graph of both principal curvatures. And this point is an umbilic point, so just touch one point. Next, we consider the behavior of principal curvatures near k non front single points. In such a case, we have the following. Let f be a frontal and p a singular point of the first kind, and let gamma be a singular curve passing through p. And if p is a 2 times 2k non-front singular point of f, then one of principal curvatures can be extended as a continuous function near p, and another is unbounded near p. On the other hand, if p is a 2k plus one non-front singular point of f, and kappa nu does not vanish at zero, or uh, kappa nu has a finite multiplicity at zero, then kappa one is continuous on this set, but unbounded along this set. And uh, kappa two is continuous on this set, but unbounded along this curve where kappa j are the principal curvature of f. So, uh, for example, if 
uh, if capital uh, S1 plus minus singularity, so one principal curvature is uh, continuous function, but another is uh, unbounded function. And uh, sec the example of second assertion is here. Uh, let f be given by this form. Uh, then the origin is a cuspidal cross cap. Uh, and uh, by the direct calculation, we have kappa nu is 2. Uh, this is non zero at the origin. We consider the denominators of principal curvatures kappa j for f on the u axis. Then we have the, these forms. So the upper one is the denominators uh, for kappa 1 along the u axis, and uh, the bottom one is the denominator of the, for the kappa 2 along the u axis. So uh, the, on the uh, u is and now the u axis is a singular curve. So u, if u is positive, then the uh, upper one is uh, non zero and the bottom one is zero. So kappa one is uh, well defined on the u, on the u is positive. The positive u axis. However, kappa two, uh, but uh, um, is unbounded along the positive u axis. On the other hand, if u is negative, so uh, kappa two is well defined and kappa one is bounded. So theorem three point six in this functions are verified. So these are the graph of principal curvatures of F. So this is kappa 1. So uh, this is function is uh, continuous except for the positive u, uh, negative u. And this is the uh, graph of principal curvature kappa 2. Uh, this is continuous uh, except for positive u. And this is a both of principal curvatures. That's all. Thank you for your listening.